tonight, and uh, we are looking at the supreme revelation. As we start out the book of Hebrews, I mentioned last week, always keep in mind the book of Hebrews is a book that is written, I believe, uh, the author being that of the Apostle Paul. Some would argue, and I always say this because, and believe it or not, there are some pastors and preachers, they do not fellowship with each other because of that one disagreement. And here's the reality. Who cares, right? Who cares who wrote the book of Hebrews? Who cares who didn't write the book of Hebrews? I'll tell you for sure who wrote the book of Hebrews. That was the Holy Ghost of God. How about that? But I believe that to be of Paul. Paul, the Holy Ghost of God, used Paul uh, to pen the words that we now have as the book of Hebrews. But in that, what you always want to keep in mind when reading and studying the book of Hebrews is that Hebrews, this book, is written to and for first-generation born-again believers, Jewish born-again believers. They were always trying to hang on to the law. They were always trying to hang on to those things of tradition. Now that it makes sense to you, right? That's why the book of Hebrews deals with quite a bit of the law, of the prophets, and, and that of, uh, of, of, of the priesthood and things like that. So it's no mistake that uh, the, this one book starts out Verse number one, how you know, and the way it starts out in verse number one. So we're looking at tonight is the supreme of revelation that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, Jesus is superior to the prophets. You find that in verse number one. Look here where it says, God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these days. Now here it is. Now it's these days. Now hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heirs of all things, by whom also he made the world, who being the brightness of his glory and the expressed image of his person, and talking about Christ, by the way, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. I just wrote a little devotion for the uh, uh, Calvary Collar coming out this October about the position of Christ. If you are in Christ and you say Christ is in you, where is Christ? Well, the Bible says He's on the right hand of the throne of God. Now, where should our position be? On the right hand of the throne of God. Amen? And that's where we should be in our daily walk, in our daily relationship with the Lord. If we say we as believers, if we say we, are, that we as Christians are in Christ, right? And we say that Christ is in us, then we really need to seriously think about what position we're in. Where are we in our Christian walk? Christ being on the right hand of the throne of God. Amen? So this morning we're going to recap what we looked at last week and then we're going to get into uh, the second part of verse number 2. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you again for the evening. We thank you for the Word of God. I do pray tonight, Lord, you'll help me with the words to say tonight as I preach your Word, Lord. God, help me, Lord, to get uh, through this discomfort, Lord, and I just pray that you'll help me to focus and to have my mind stayed on thee tonight, Lord. But we'll be faithful to praise you in all we do. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. All right, so we looked at last week, number one, that Jesus Christ is supreme spokesman of God. Okay, and I want to go back over this because I know Miss Peggy, you and Miss Jan, you weren't here last week. So I, I want everyone to get, and then Clint as well, I want everyone to get and understand what we're looking at here. So Jesus Christ is the supreme spokesman of for God. It's what it says here in verse number one. God, speaking of the Lord, God, you, you notice that comma there, who at sundry times and divers manner uh, spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. God has always sent, and when, when the Lord is speaking to Israel or when the Lord wants to bring a revelation to Israel, God's chosen people, He always sends a prophet. Always sends a prophet. And the Bible says here, yet Look here in verse number 2. Hath in these last days spoken to us by His Son. So now no longer does the Lord speak to His people through a prophet. He's now speaking to His people through His Son, Jesus Christ. So therefore, 
Jesus is the supreme spokesman for God. We looked at number uh, letter A. At first, God spoke to, to man by prophets, didn't He? He did. In the Old Testament, we find, first of all, God spoke to Moses in a thundering voice, number one. Number two, God spoke to Elijah by a still, small voice. Number three is God spoke to Isaiah in a vision. And then number four, we looked at in 1 Samuel 3, verse 1 through verse number 10, is God spoke to Samuel in a dream. But it all boils down at the end of the day that at the first, God spoke to man, God spokesman for, to man for God was the prophets. Let me tell you something. Today there are no prophets. I know you see it on TV. I know you turn on YouTube or you, you're rolling, you're scrolling through TikTok and you see prophet so-and-so or, let me, or prophetess so-and-so. There are no prophets today, nor has God sent a prophet for, uh, to speak to, to the world on TV. Because God, if, if God, if, if God was to send a prophet, it would be to Israel and Israel only, not to the church. God will never speak to the church by a prophet. God will never speak to the church by an apostle. In order to be an apostle, you have to be an eyewitness of the resurrection of Christ. And there are no more apostles today. The last of the apostles was the apostle John, who wrote the book of Revelation. So at first, God spoke to man by prophets. But number two in this letter B is we find that this verse, starting out in verse number 2, is now it's God's Word. It's His full revelation. It's found in Jesus Christ. Now God speaks to us through His Word. As it says here in verse number 2 again, Hebrews chapter 1, verse number 2, hath in these last days, not, now, now, let, me, let me reiterate this, that's not saying the last days, right? How many believe tonight you're living in the last days? Right? Now we say that, but that's not what that's talking about. Paul is saying here, or the author of Hebrews is saying here, but in these last few days, in these last few weeks, or these last few months, but since the time of Christ, right? You have to understand, uh, anytime you read and you study the Word of God, you always look at what time was it written, what's the time frame, who is speaking, okay? Who's the author? Who is speaking? Who is the author or the speaker speaking to? And number four, what is he speaking about? Those four things, if you keep those four things in mind when you're studying the Scriptures, you're studying the Word of God, then it will keep you from taking things out of context. We are so very good today, and I'm telling you, YouTube, TikTok, since it's such a quick a uh, uh, 30 second video, they throw one verse out there, they throw that verse completely out of context and it's got people confused. Read before and read after. Who's speaking? What's the time frame they're speaking in? What are they speaking about? And, when, and, when, uh, and, and who are they speaking about? Okay? Those things keep in mind. And it will help us from taking things out of context. So now what we find is no longer... Uh, it's the spokesman for God of the prophets. The Bible says now, the Bible says, hath in these last days spoken to us by His Son, whom He has appointed heir of all things. We're going to look at that tonight as we, uh, as we get more into His Word. But I like here in, in John chapter number 1, verse number 1, we know that. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, right? Right? But if you read, continue to read in verse number 2, the Bible says, And the same, what? The same, the Word, was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. It's the Word. So now, how, how do we speak to God? We speak to God by prayer, don't we? How does God speak to us? Through His Word. That's why it's so vitally important that you get under the preaching of the Word of God. That you find yourself seated 
under the teaching of the Word of God. You find, your, you find a church that's a Bible-believing, Bible-preaching, Bible-teaching church. Because the final revelation from God is His Word. The Word of God is our final authority. This is it. God's not going to send a prophet to give a new revelation. God's not going to send a YouTuber to unlock the codes of the Bible. There are no codes of the Bible. There's nothing. Somebody said uh, last Saturday was the day the rapture was supposed to take place. Is that right? The 23rd of September was the day the rapture was supposed to take place. Do you know how many times people have tried to predict that date? I was telling Caroline on, she was laughing about it. She didn't believe it. She was laughing about it. And I guess she thought that I knew about it. I never, never even heard of it. But anyway, so, so she said, and she was kind of laughing. I said, you know, Caroline, you know how many times people have predicted that. I said, I can remember in 1988 that somebody came out with 88 reasons why 1988 was going to be the year of the rapture. And then I said, do you know, do you realize? And after that, every president that was sitting in the White House was the Antichrist. I remember when Bill Clinton became president. He's the Antichrist. I remember when the Bushes were involved in the presidency. They're the Antichrist. And then when Obama got into office, surely he's the Antichrist. There was even a man who called himself the theologian who in the Aramaic, he proved that when Jesus said the words that Satan was going to come as a lightning from on high, that Jesus would have said these words in the Aramaic, that Satan was going to come as Obama. So I thought, that's intriguing. So I checked it out, and sure enough, that's what Jesus would have said. If that's what Jesus was speaking at the time. Because the word ooh and the word Obama, two different words, put them together and it sounded like Obama. But I've heard that year after year. And then when Trump got into office, he's the Antichrist, right? If he ain't the Antichrist, he sure is the forerunner. I don't know. They haven't said anything about it, Joe Biden. That'd make you wonder about that. But anyway, <laughs> that's right. He's an alien, right? But, you know, you know, every year somebody has predicted it. But what do we have to go to? How do we know when the day and the time is going to be? How do we know that? Because the Bible tells us you don't know that, right? And that's what we have to go to. That's what we have to trust in. It's going to be out there on YouTube. It's going to be out there on TikTok and whatever other platform is in the near future, right? If those things are going to be out there because the Bible says that in the last days there are many that are going to be deceived that are going to deceive and be deceived. There are many that are going to come and say they are the Christ. There are many that are going to come and do the miracles that Jesus did. But what is our final revelation? What is our final final go to when we want to know whether it's true or whether it's false, whether it's a false prophet or whether it's really a revelation from God. What do we go to? We go to the Word of God. Why? Because now it's God's Word. His full revelation is found in His Son, Jesus Christ. He is the Word. And the Word was with God and the Word was God. So we have to stay in Christ. As I was mentioning a few minutes ago, if we say that we are in Christ, where is Christ? By the way, let me, let me clear the air on one thing here. Jesus is not in your heart. Now, that's probably set some of y'all back because you were taught that, weren't you? How many was always taught that Jesus is in my heart, right? The Holy Ghost is in your heart. Jesus is on the right hand of the throne of God. The Holy Ghost is in your heart. The Holy Ghost is the one that leads you and guides you into all truth. The Holy Ghost is the one that, that touches that nerve that hurts, right? You know, you go to the doctor like tomorrow I'm going to go to the doctor. He's going to say, does that hurt? Right? You know what I mean? You're like, yeah, it hurts. Quit touching it. That's what the Holy Ghost does. Does that hurt? Yeah, it hurts. 
Does that hurt? I told you it hurt. Does that hurt? Yeah, it hurts. That's the Holy Ghost. He'll prick your heart. He'll get that soft spot. He'll get that tender spot. He'll tell you, uh-uh, uh-uh, no, no, no. You see, where's the position of Christ? If you're in Christ as Christ is in you, then Christ, Christ's position is on the right hand of the throne of God. And here's what I'm going to show you in the last part of verse number 2 in relation to that. The Bible says here again, let's look at verse number 2. Hath in these last days spoken to us by His Son. We, we, we clarified that. But the second part of this, this is point number 2. The Bible says, Whom He hath appointed heirs of what? All things. By whom also He made the worlds. So as we're looking at tonight here that Christ is the supreme revelation. He's not only the supreme spokesman of God, but number two, Jesus Christ is appointed heirs of all things. Letter A. The Bible says he has inherited all power. Now he's inherited all power in heaven and in earth. Because the Great Commission, our Lord gives His disciples, the church, by the way, the Great Commission. By the way, the church didn't start on the day of Pentecost. That's not when the church started. The church started with His 12 disciples. The Lord just blessed the church on the day of Pentecost. That's when the Holy Ghost of God fell upon the church on the day of Pentecost. And the Bible says here in, 20, in Matthew 28, verse 18, And Jesus spake, came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given to me heaven and heaven and in earth. 1 Peter 3, verse 22, Who has gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto Him. Let me reread that again. The Bible says, Who has gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God. The Bible says angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto Him. You see, he, He's inherited all power. He's inherited all power in heaven. He's inherited all power on earth. And the Bible says again, I, I want to show you something uh, 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 just, just it's going, it's going to blow your mind tonight. Ready? In First Peter three verse twenty-two, we see that he's on the right hand of God, right? And then the Bible says, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. Do you believe in angels? Amen. You believe in demons? You believe in demons? You better believe in demons. They're out there. You know the demons are angels? They're the fallen angels. And so even Christ, those fallen angels are made subject unto Christ. You know Satan is an angel? He's a created being. He's made subject unto Christ. Now, read in the book of Job, right? How many, how many read the book of Job? You know a little bit about the book of Job. Job chapter number 1. Satan's going to and fro about the earth, right? And the Lord says, hey, come here. Come here for a minute. You consider my servant Job? I can just imagine they're looking down. Hey, see that man down there? Consider my servant Job. And Satan goes, no, because you have a hedge about him. You know, what, you know what Satan was telling the Lord? Because you have authority. You know, the demons even displayed that fear when Jesus spake to them. Well, let's go back to the maniac of Gadara. Uh, this this, uh, this uh, team of de demons call themselves legion, right? And what did, they, what did they tell the Lord? Hey, 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 no, no, have mercy on us. Our time is not yet. What did they mean by that? 
You know, there's going to come a time when, when Satan and all of his little demons are going to be thrown into the bottomless pit. And that's what they were saying to the Lord. And here's what they said. Lord, bid us that we go into the herd of swine. It was the demons that asked permission of Christ to go into the herd of swine. It was not Jesus who cast them into the herd of swine. It was the demons that says, give us the permission. You have authority. You're all powerful. What is it? You have all power and authority in heaven and in earth. And yet we walk around here sitting there always giving the devil credit for bad things that happen to us. Don't we? If you believe tonight that Jesus Christ is appointed heirs of all things and He is on the right hand of the throne of God, why are we giving the devil credit? Huh? You see, He's, a, he's inherited all things. Revelation 5, verse number 12, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Letter B. He's inherited the authority to execute all judgment. John chapter 5, verse 22. For the Father judges no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. Let me tell you something today. He's your Savior today, but He's your judge tomorrow. We have this idea that, well... <laughs> Jesus will just love it no matter what. It's not what the Bible says. And, and be very, very careful about what Jesus' people are talking about. And, and I'll say again, it may sound like a, a broken record, but I'll say again, the Jehovah's Witness is not the same Jesus of the Bible. That's a different Jesus. Joe was witness to tell you, well, my Jesus wouldn't do that. Well, it's a different Jesus. The Jesus the, the, the Mormon church teaches is not the same Jesus of the Bible. Oh, wait a minute, preacher. They have a Bible, don't they? It's not the same Jesus. It's a different Jesus. The progressive movement now that's called progressive Christianity that says Jesus was a homosexual is not the same Jesus of the Bible. It's not the same Jesus. The Jesus of the Word of God, our final authority, right? The one who has been appointed heirs of all things is your Savior today, but will be your judge tomorrow. Again, for the Father judges no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. Number or Letter C, uh, we see that He has inherited the Lordship over all things. Romans chapter 14, verse 8 and 9, For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. Now listen, listen to this very carefully. I'm, let me stop for a minute. Go, go with me, uh, Romans 14. I, I want to show you something. See, he, he has inherited the Lordship over all things. He's Lord. Not only should he be Lord of your life, But he should be Lord over all things. So Romans chapter 14, verse number 8. For whether we live... All right, how many is living tonight? Hello, yeah, I hope so. We live unto the Lord. Amen. Miss Peggy, you had a great uh, testimony this uh, 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 beginning of service. You praise the Lord, thank God. Life's good right now, isn't it? You're living unto the Lord. And if you're living unto the Lord, if, if we are living, we are now alive in Christ. We are, we are living in Christ. We are in the position where Christ is. Then we're supposed to live unto the Lord. What does the word unto mean? Uh, for? We're, we're supposed to live for, for the Lord, right? We're supposed to live as to what the Lord would have us to do, right? We're living unto the Lord. 
It's the same word where the Bible says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands. Right? It's a privilege and an honor. Right? So, so again, if in Romans 14, uh, verse number 8, For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we what? You know what, you know what Paul is saying here? Well, life is good, praise the Lord. Well, life isn't, praise the Lord. Whether you live, you live unto the Lord. Whether you die, you're dying unto the Lord. Hey, death, where is thy sting? Grave is where is thy victory. Whether you're having a good day or a bad day, it's for the Lord. Thank God you're saved. And if life is ended and it's all over, praise the Lord, we're in glory. Amen. Whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ both died and rose and revived that, we, that He might be Lord both of the dead and the living. I would say He's Lord over all things, right? You know, we can't put, we can't put the Lord in a box, put Him up on the shelf, or put Him in the closet close the closet door, and come Sunday morning, where our, we, when we get our Bible off the shelf, we'll pull Him out too. That's not the way it works. If you're doing that, where you're only, you, you're only, He's only the Lord of your life on one day, don't be surprised if all you get Him for is one day. You'll get that in a minute. And we wonder why we have so many problems in our families. We wonder why we have so many problems in our life. I'm not preaching a prosperity message. I'm not telling you that you serve God, you start tithing, He's going to make you rich. Nope, that's not what He's going to do. That's the last thing He's going to do because He knows exactly what you're going to do. You're going to stop serving Him. No, preacher, I don't think I'll do that. Yeah, you will. How many families have we seen since the since the uh, invention or creation of reality TV. How many of those families have been destroyed because of fame and glory? Huh? One that comes to mind is the Duggars. Boy, in, the, in, in your Christian circles... I mean, they, they were, everybody loved the Duggars, right? Everybody just thought the Duggars were wonderful. They were great. They were the, the, the iconic Christian family that was living for a testimony for God on TV. And everybody thought they were wonderful. And now that entire family has been destroyed because of sexual, ancestral molestation that was kept secret for years while all of that was going on. Fame and glory. There was a television show called John and Kate Plus Eight. How many remember that? I mean, he started out pretty good, right, I guess. I don't know. I don't, I'm not really into those kind of shows, but Angel watched them, so I'll watch them. You, know. you, know, you sacrifice unto the Lord. Amen. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, it was uh, uh, cameras followed a, a family that had already had one, one set of twins, and then she had six tuplets. And that family is completely destroyed today because of fame. Just destroyed. So I'm not preaching a prosperity message. God's not going to make you rich. And the reason why is He knows what you're going to do with it. See, it's not money that's the root of all evil. It's when you start to love that money that it becomes the root of all evil. You see, the Lord is, He's inherited the Lordship over all things. Amen? Letter D. Let me move on. 
And he's going to inherit all government as well. Speaking of the millennial reign in Isaiah 9, verse 6 through 7, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Unto the throne of David upon his kingdom to to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice. From henceforth, even forever, for the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Amen. He's going to inherit all government. And then letter E is, he's inherited a name that is above every name. See, there's no other name like the name of Jesus, is there? I mean, you know, you're in a crowd of people or you're in a workplace or whatever, and, and, and you know, you'll agree with me, and, and you'll, you'll nod your head, yeah, that's true, that's true. But look, you're, you're in a crowd of people, and you're talking about sports, and everybody's like enjoying the conversation. You're talking about, hey, you may even talk about a football player you don't even like. And everybody seems to get along, Right? And you're, you're talking about Buddha, and you're talking about things that are Zen, and you're talking about, oh, Mohammed and how wonderful and peaceful he is, and, and everything's a wonderful conversation. But the moment you mention Jesus, you done ruin everybody's day. Right? You've got a complaint headed your way through, through HR. You better believe it. Somebody's going to complain. Well, I just don't think that the workplace is the proper place for those discussions. Right? Oh, but you're talking about what, what, what kind of discussions? Religious discussions? Yeah, you were talking about Buddha. No problem with that. Oh, you know, in those discussions, you were talking about Islam and how wonderful and peaceful they are and how beautiful it is to see a woman completely covering herself. No offense there, right? But the minute, minute I mention a, a, a name like Jesus and a verse that says, For God so loved you as the world that He gave His only begotten Son. And in and, and all of that, they're upset. In the name of Jesus. You see, because He has established a name that's above every name. And here's what the Bible says in Philippians 2, verse 9 through 10. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow of the things in heaven and the things in earth, and the things under the earth. See, he's given him a name above every name. And then let me go to number three, and then I'll finish up tonight. We'll try to finish this up next week. I've still got five more points. But they're short points with no subpoints. <laughs> number three, Jesus is the creator and the maker of the worlds. And here's where we're going to be in verse number 3. Uh, at, at the end of verse number 2, and then we'll start out in verse number 3 uh, next week. Again, hath in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heirs of all things. But look here. By whom also he made the worlds. I'm just going to give you a few verses tonight, and then we'll be done. In John chapter 1, verse number 1, we see again, that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. Paul says here, but to us there is but one God. 
And here's where some of your cults, particularly speaking of Jehovah's Witness, they will say the Trinity is a false doctrine. The Trinity being Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, right? Because they said if you're only teaching and preaching there's one God, how can there be three gods? Not three gods. Not three different gods, but there's three in one Godhead. And that's what Paul is saying here to the church of Corinth in 1 Corinthians chapter number 8, verse number 6. But to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom all are all things, and we in Him, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, by whom all things... And we buy Him. You see, Jesus Christ is the creator and the maker of the worlds. And then Paul says to the church of Ephesus in Ephesians 3 verse 9, And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. And the last thing I'm going to look at tonight here, and, and then we can, we can pray and be done, is Colossians 1, verse 16. For by Him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible. You realize there's a whole other world out there we can't see? How many believe that? Huh? <laughs> I'm not talking about ghosts. Huh? Somebody asked me one time, Preacher, you believe in ghosts? Demons. That's what they are. It's demonic activity, folks. And here's the thing about ghosts. <laughs> Why is it the ghost is always wearing Victorian-style clothes? How come, we, how come nobody sees ghosts from, like, cave, caveman days? <laughs> How, how come nobody sees ghosts like from uh, 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 colonial days? Why is it always 1800s or something? You see, it's demonic activities. It's the deception of the mind. It's trying to get people to second guess their faith in God. And the medians, the, the, what do you call them, mediums or medians? Yeah, yeah, frauds. Did you know there was a... Uh, a very well-known, famous magician back in the 1920s who debunked all of that, fortune tellers and medians. And he was ridiculed for doing that. Houdini was his name. He exposed the whole thing. He said, look, people, he says, I'm entertaining you and telling you this is not real. He said, those people are trying to tell you it's real. And so, see, folks, there, there's no such thing as a ghost. Paranormal activity, no. There's a whole other world, folks, that we can't see that God has protected us from. And that's what the Bible is saying here, that uh, and things that are in earth that are visible and invisible. Some people look at you cross-eyed when you talk about that, but yet they, they, they'll tell you they believe in angels. We entertain them unaware all the time. And by the way, when that verse says that we entertain angels, that's not only good angels. Uh, that'll, that'll, make you, that'll make you perk up, wouldn't it? How many, how many bad angels do we entertain? Unaware. Huh? So again, it, it, again, he's created all things that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And listen tonight, aren't you glad you get a part of that? Amen. Praise the Lord. You get to have a part in that. Amen. I mean, isn't it good to know somebody? Amen. You know, you know, and on a on a on an earthly level, isn't it good to know somebody that's got a little bit of authority? You know, isn't it good to know somebody that's got a little bit of influence, right? Isn't it good to have somebody you know, somebody like on TV, they always got a friend that knows somebody, right? 
Well, look, you've got a friend that knows everything. And you've got a friend here that's creator and makers of the world. That again, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by Him and for Him. No matter what happens in Washington, D.C., He's still on the throne, right? No matter what happens with the conspiracies, you know, He's still on the throne. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, all hearts and minds cleared tonight.